uh, part of the fun part of the fun of developing practices like that is that it it keeps us regularly reminded of what God's up to in the world uh, it helps us to remember that we are centered in his story he is not just centered in ours in some way uh, that he is doing something in the world and he's inviting us to take a part of that uh, not the other way around and so there's a real beauty that we get to be a part of what God is up to and his word actually transforms us in that process and so it's a beautiful beautiful thing to be able to do um, my so I have a few questions that we're going to end up with four questions that will hopefully help to shape your summer um, and if you ask them daily and uh, or even weekly together uh, you have a microchurch meeting or an MC meeting, you're welcome. That's just free. You can take this, put it in your MC. You're good to go. Uh, the second thing you can do is do this on your own or in your marriage or with your roommates. And I guarantee you'll be more aware of where God is at work at the end of the summer than you are going into it. Um, and there's a beauty to that. But to, to build to that, I'm going to do what uh, you're expecting me to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a text message thread. I'm going to talk about a passage, and I'm going to talk about an octopus. Clearly where you thought this was going when you drove over here today. Uh, the first thing, a text message thread. Uh, we were on a text message thread. Um, one of you, sorry, TJ, was on it by accident. Uh, I was texting, uh, I'm, looking, I'm thinking David, Matt, Jake, who's who I thought I was texting. And we had started a conversation talking about, do we see the miracles of Acts taking place in our lives, our works, our ministry, our city today? Uh, and then why or why not? Uh, and just that was a conversation we were having because as you read through Acts, you see the Spirit stirring up some pretty amazing stuff, asking the question, should we long for that? Should we? That's not the question we're going to get into. Uh, but that led to some really good reflection and reorientation of us thinking about our lives. I realized about five text messages deep uh, that I had TJ on the thread instead of Jake. And so TJ was just getting all these different things. So that's what happens when you get on Pastor Text Message thread. Uh, but you're welcome. And he's like, man, I love seeing where God's at work. So it worked out well for us too. The passage though, then I come to this passage. It's from Deuteronomy 6. Been reading through the Old Testament. In Missio, we're going uh, through the entire story of God, just a story at a time, taking it, breaking it down. And so uh, this wasn't one that we were doing all together, but it was so formative for the people of God. Uh, it says this in uh, chapter Deuteronomy 6, starting in verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates, even if the HOA doesn't like it. When the Lord our God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, catch this, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give you. God had promised that he was going to give Israel a blessing in order that they would be a blessing to the rest of the world. So when I do that for you, when I start to give you that land, it's a land flourishing with large and flourishing cities that you did not build, houses with all kinds of good things that you did not provide, wells that you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Remember the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. Remember his commands, these ways to live the best possible life. And if you're hearing at this point, you might be saying, uh, how in the world would they ever forget that? <laughs> do you not remember the Red Sea? Do you not remember all the stuff that happened in the wilderness? Do you not remember like the rock? Do you not remember like ooh, pretty gnarly stuff, the plagues, uh, all the provision, all the signs of God's presence, fire and clouds? How in the world would you ever forget that? Uh, because you start to get comfortable in the rhythms of life or just the considerations that it takes to be a human in the world. And those memories start to fade when we step into more comfortable, convenient circumstances. And that wasn't just a threat for Israel, right? That's a threat for us, that we can very often forget to be paying attention to what God has done, what he is doing, even pressing into what he will do. And so for the sake of this particular conversation, the thing that came to mind was that warning if we aren't careful, the comfort and even the continual experience of living as humans in this world can cause some amnesia. We may not remember his mighty acts, even if it was done yesterday, even if it was the very fabric of our lives, even if we tattooed a date on our arm as the ink fades, so does our memory. 
even though we once enjoyed a full, robust experience with the Spirit, why He called us into the work that we're doing in the first place, that can start to fade away if we are not careful. And what I want to encourage us to do is to pay attention. And so to learn how to pay attention, we're going to do what most people do. We're going to look at an octopus. Uh, and I don't know if you guys have seen this on Netflix. If you haven't, you're missing out. Uh, it's called My Octopus Teacher. I am legit. Write this down. You will never think an octopus will make you cry. Angela, did you cry when you watched that? You're not a fair one. You, but you will, you, will, you will well up with tears when you watch this. So we're not going to spoil the ending of this. But what I want us to do is that we're going to watch this clip. And I want you to do it with two lenses. One being like pretty amazed that God's amazing, that he forms these things on the bottom of the ocean that people no, normally never see. But the second side of that, uh, watch what happens when one man pays attention to a particular part of creation for an extended period of time and how his awareness changes. And if the Spirit wants to teach you through this parable, let him. And then I'll pull us with four questions. If we pay attention to these, it'll be pretty stinking amazing. So uh, watch as this dude spends the entire year, day after day, going down into the same exact kelp bed. Uh, he saw some pretty incredible things, and what he realized was as he looked around, there was an entire world that he was unaware of before. And what he realized is if he paid careful attention to what was in his environment already, there was a ton of unseen activity that all he had to do was pay attention to. He found his heart being warm to things that he never thought of. He says, I'm not an animal person, uh, but I grew so connected to these fish because I kept showing up in their environment over a long period of time. I was never aware of the life cycle of these animals, but once I spent time around them, I wanted to explore more to see what was going on in the phenomena that I was being able to watch. The dude's in the ice cold water with no wetsuit because he wanted to be close to that environment and he swears you get used to it, but I'm kind of skeptical. And so if you wanna find out how it plays out over a period of time, it's about an hour uh, of time that you can watch and see it. Uh, Josh, can you switch back? Spending time in one place over a long period of time, you'll realize that God does some pretty stinking amazing things. And so the, the question that I have for us is, if that's true for an octopus on the bottom of the ocean, how much more true for us as we walk our lives in God's world? Like how much more as we pay attention to, and ask the questions, all right, God, what are you up to and what are you doing? Will we be formed as God's people? Uh, aware very clearly of where his presence is at work. And so if you're taking notes, I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and take those. Here's four questions to ask every week. Uh, if you tracked along in your Bible, Jesus asked 307 questions of people as they followed him. I'm just giving you four. And so you can be thankful. Uh, he actually only directly answers, I think, three questions in all the Gospels, even though he's asked like 180 some. People ask him, and he only directly answers three. So when Matt doesn't answer your question directly, uh, he's following after Jesus. Um, but here's the first question I want us to do, and we're going to just walk through these super quickly. What is God doing in me? When we ask the question, what is God doing in me, uh, this is fostering an awareness of our personalities, our choices, our history, uh, asking the question internally, what do I notice God is up to in me? Uh, this is exposed as we live life in the world, as we deal with hardships, as we deal with suffering, as we deal with joy, as we deal with families and maybe our smaller communities that we're trying to live out the gospel with. All that stuff comes out. And if we pay attention, we're going to see that God is forming us as people to better be new creation people or people that reflect his glory, who are dealing with wounds, who are finding the freedom to forgive. But a lot of times if we just breeze through life, we don't pay attention to those things, we can really miss out. Oh, what is God doing in me? Second question, what is Jesus doing around me or what is God doing around me? Oh, when I look at the relationships that I'm in, what is God up to? Oh, where is conflict, jealousy, bitterness, gentleness, patience, kindness, gentleness? I said it twice because we really need that one. Who am I struggling to love? Who am I struggling to forgive? What is it about life together in community that's causing me to feel so anxious when I'm showing up for these gatherings? Uh, some of that stuff comes out when we're around and in relationship with other people. And so asking that question, slowing down to pay attention, what is God doing around me? And then asking the question, what is God doing through me? 
Sometimes we can get really, really frustrated because it feels like God isn't up to anything, right? It feels like we've been, we've been loving, we've been serving, and nothing much is happening. Uh, part of that is because we're looking for the wrong things. When Jesus was on earth, he said, hey, the kingdom of God isn't something that you're going to be able to say, there it is, there it is, there it is, right? It's going to be a little bit slow. It's going to be very different. Uh, it's going to be probably largely unimpressive for what you were expecting, but absolutely beautiful in its flourishing. But we have to train our eyes to look and see what actually is that. But asking the question, what is God doing around me? What's he doing in my neighborhood? What's he doing in my gym? What's he up to in our community? What's he up to in the city of Mesa? Because sometimes we we make little mental notations of that. You know what I'm talking about? Like you, you notice God at work. You're like, oh, that was pretty cool. Like, that's amazing. We saw him do that. But then we forget it, right? It comes right out. And so jotting these answers down can be very, very helpful. Uh, We are not the heroes of the story. We're humble servants. But we can still see what God is up to. And it can be pretty amazing. And then the the fourth question, uh, this one's a good one because it helps you to catapult to the next series, right? What is next as I respond to what the Spirit has shown me? What's next as I respond to what the Spirit has shown me? When you sit with those first three questions over any amount of time, any amount of time, and the Spirit starts to bring stuff up, it would be uh, very silly of us or way too fast paced if we don't stop and ask, Spirit, what do you want to do with what I just learned? What do you want to do with what I just saw? What do you want to do in me, through me, around me? What is next as I follow Jesus? And this is what I was saying. If we ask those questions diligently over a 10 week period of time, I am convinced that we would be people who'd be far more aware of what God was up to. Not even that God was doing anything different than what he was already up to. We would just be aware of it a little bit more. Uh, We would see where he's at work in us, around us, and through us. And we would have taken very concrete steps of obedience as we follow him. And so we're going to take a few minutes to try this practice on as well. I'm just going to give us five minutes to do it. And so we're going to take the next five minutes. uh, We'll put the music back up. And I want to encourage you on your own. These questions will stay on the board. So again, Matt already broke the rule and let you bring your device out. So you're welcome to do that again if you'd like. uh, Pull that out. Open up a note. Throw these questions down that we have them for later. And then just start asking the question, all right, God, what are you doing in me? What have you been up to in me? Taking a pause, a breath, a realization. Spending five minutes with these four questions. And I would encourage you to build that practice in either this or the practice. You let the spirit direct you. Uh, Does he want you spending time like in that daily office is that what he's calling you into is it to as a community be asking these questions on a regular basis and tracking the movement of god over the next 10 weeks or the next 10 months and as we grow in awareness would we grow in worship because our god is with us he is present and he is providing and he is powerfully at work we don't have to wonder about that so let's take a few minutes and try this on just ask the questions jot down some answers as they come to you And then we will continue worshiping in song in just a few minutes.